And we're off. It is Thursday, July 7th, 2022 AD. Happy White History Month, everybody. White History Month is for everybody, by the way, because uh, what's good for whites is good for everybody. All right? It's true. It's a fact because it's for what's right. Uh, it is 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Daylight Time here in Los Angeles. And if you are hearing my voice, do hit one, please. If you don't hear me, press two. If you don't hear me, if you don't hear me, press two. <laughs> uh, that's, more, that's mainly for the Odyssey, but it's been working, I think, so far. I will get to your Super Chats, guys. It is, again, it's Thursday. And I will get to your calls as well, guys. Um, going to talk about the unpresidential, I call it unpresidential <laughs> Medal of Freedom. I'm chuckling because a couple people pressed two. I think they're trolling me. What kind of shirt is that? It is a, the Hake Report shirt. I'll tell you about it after the intro. Going to talk about the Presidential Medal of Freedom and the type of people who are being honored. Bunch of, in my opinion, dumb, lame victims. Sorry, kids. Um, I'm also going to talk perhaps about the very disloyal backstabbers. There are some very disloyal backstabbers in the world. In this case, there was one against Trump, perhaps, perhaps. And I do hope to get to this pocket article about uh, people pleasers. How to know if you're a people pleaser, the eight signs you're too nice and why it's impacting your well-being. Uh, This for the ladies, well, for the female-minded males too, right? Nice. And um, some other interesting stories. There was this supposed tr- se- child, child sex abuse victim, a, a black female, who alleged, alleged victim, who allegedly murdered a male and set his house on fire. And, um, and she's charged with uh, murder, right? Or in first degree intentional har- homicide. But the Wisconsin Supreme Court said, no, no. And, I don't know, it's hard to know what's go- really going on. And some other things. Hangry is real. Uh, I don't like that word. But anyway. Um, anyway, guys, all that and your calls, let's get right on with the show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hank Report. The Hank Report. La, la, la. guys doing just let me retweet my uh, tweeted video did you know that I tweet out video on Twitter as well how y'all doing I am fine I am wearing my uh, Hake stop screaming at my ear I am wearing my the Hake report one of my the Hake report t-shirts and you can find it by going to the Hake report dot com that is um, the Teespring store will be ha- where you find it, but if you go to thehakereport.com and then look into the menu, it says Teespring in the menu, maybe like the last item, and then it's teespring.com slash stores slash thehakereport. And there are various colors that you can get. This is 100% cotton. I prefer the 100% cotton to the tri-blend, but you can get the tri-blend. It feels nicer unless you're sweaty, and then if you're sweaty, then... You know, it has some polyester in it or something, and you know me, I hate polyester. Hate! I'm not supposed to hate, but I do hate polyester. And I also hate, uh, boomer-type Gen X people. I hate those people. (laughs) I'm talking about Master Jim. Is Master Jim in the chat? Uh, he called into my show complaining about being hidden or something. And I unhid him, I made him a approved commenter and mod and everything. I don't know if I see him, though. Other people can probably see him, but I don't know, maybe he has me uh, 
blocked. There are different people who somehow have me blocked and I can't see them. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get to um, some of these stories. I want to cover this uh, unpresidential Medal of Freedom. But first, let me get to a call or two, guys. I didn't get to too many calls yesterday, so uh, let, me, let me start off with one or two here right now. David in Norway is on the line. How are you doing, David? What's up? Hey, man. Hey. hey I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing fine. Thank you. Yeah, hey, how's the sound coming in? It's, okay? it's coming in all right. We can, we can deal with it. I think people can understand yeah, okay. you well enough. I'll try to, uh, to call uh, Jesse, but I called in a little late, so oh, yeah. I'll try again some other day. Sounds good. To answer the biblical uh, question. But nice. Yeah, I can go for a white history moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is and, White uh, History Month. I am celebrating it as well. Month. Nice. Go ahead. So, uh, I was thinking about uh, Charles Martel, the king of the Frank. Uh, have you heard about him? Charles Martel, king of the Franks? Okay. Yeah. I had uh, not heard of him. Which, uh, Died in 741 AD. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they became what is... Uh, known as France today, and uh, wow. Charles Martel fought off the Muslims in the great battle of uh, Tours in France. Okay. And uh, that was uh, one of the most uh, epic, uh, most important battles in the history of Europe against the Moors and the Muslims. Yeah. And uh, had it not been for uh, Charles Martel having God working through him and fighting off the Muslims, we probably would all be Muslims uh, as we speak. I mean, uh, wow. To this day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, so, uh, hat tip to Charles Martel. To this day! Whoa. D- did that drop come in loud, people? It came in loud for me. It surprised me. Uh, but thank you. Thank you, uh Whatever his name is, I'm yeah, blanking on his name. And, uh, what else? Did, uh, uh, should I give you my answer to the biblical question? No, no, I don't take no. the biblical questions because I don't. I'm not the one who comes up with them. But I do appreciate the white history uh, honor honoring of Charles Martel. That's cool. Yeah, he's a he's a, a guy who's kind of been uh, forgotten in history because. Uh, I guess they associate him with uh, nationalism and uh, loving your country. Uh, You know, that's uh, not very popular nowadays. Yeah. He was, according to a near-contemporary source, the Liber Historiae Francorum, butchering the pronunciation, I'm sure, Charles was, quote, a warrior who was uncommonly effective in battle. That's a nice description of of a man. What a what a way to be remembered! Yeah, and uh, I think it's a shame that we don't uh, honor <coughs> honor these men a lot more because uh, things were things would uh, be very different had it not been for him. And yeah, we should really appreciate, uh, especially him. Yeah, I agree with that. So, and his uh, grandson uh, was uh, Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Oh, really? Uh, um, also, king of uh, France. Okay. Which uh, spread uh, Christianity. Uh, like, not uh, ninety going off. <laughs> not to be confused with the black one, who's a disgrace today, huh? Uh, well, is that a rapper or something? Yeah, or something. Something. I don't know. I think he's a short guy who talks on the on the radio. Not that there's anything uh, wrong with being short. And, uh, <laughs> bringing dishonor to that good name. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, very true. Well, I appreciate and, uh, it, David. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a little point I also want to make about you men in America. Okay. Uh, how important it is for you to to save your country because uh, America is uh, it's like the big brother of the Western world, and if you guys fall, we all fall. So. Yeah. We really need you, maybe men so you, in America. To, you may be right about that. I'm, I know that America is important, or in a, at least in a worldly sense, and uh, the people all over 
the men all over the world definitely need a, an awakening, and and in America, that's for mm -hmm. sure, man. There's oh, something yeah. special about America, though. It's, uh... Yeah, I agree with that. I, it definitely does seem special. We should definitely love America, and uh, bring yeah. it back, bring it back to into the fold, rather than uh, <laughs> rather than just letting it fall away. Absolutely. Well, man, it's good to talk with you, David. Uh -huh. Appreciate you, man. Take care. You too. Appreciate you too. So, have a good show. Thank you. And I'll speak to you later. All right. Take care. Uh, uh Yes. Happy White History Month. And yes, the chat is reminding me that Charlemagne the God, the black one, is my competitor. <laughs> no competition. No competition. Right? Uh, I will be getting to your super chats. You can super chat there on streamlabs.com slash the Heek Report. Um, I appreciate that. I will be reading them, guys. I did miss one yesterday from Corlick, so I will be reading that, Corlick. I appreciate that. Let me get to uh, Art in Ohio, though. Art, how are you doing? Hey, Amar, how you doing? Doing fine, man. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, and hold up. It's Artie Art, baby. Yep. And I just wanted to say that uh, I'm down here in uh, VA uh, still celebrating that great uh, Fourth of July, White History Month, and that great uh, strong... Uh, Home of the brave, the uh, red, white, and blue, man. I'm over here drinking a, uh, drinking a little bit of that shine. Nice. Well, so, uh, happy I'm White History Month to you, man. I appreciate that. You're down in Virginia. Yeah, man. That's the here, state uh, where Robert E. Lee is from. And I think he's from, I think, uh, Thomas Jefferson, who I think was a, a decent man, mostly decent anyway, was from hey, there, too. Um, hey. hey, ain't nothing like Virginia. And ain't nothing like home. Yeah. My grandpa yeah, uh, was from Virginia too. One of my grandpas. Oh, he's a good man. He's a good man. I, I love him. I love him to death. I love. I love America. I love Virginia. I love West Virginia. I love Ohio. Nice. Mhm. Mm so first thing first is uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out why didn't uh, what's that that politician female's name that was uh, shaking shaking ASS? Oh, you know what. I I have not covered that, and I don't I don't have the story, but I saw that on the Jesse Lee Peterson show, and a big bump sent it to me the other day too. Let me remember, Tara Mac is the oh, oh Tiara Mac. Tiara Mac, and she did. She was over there on the beach shaking, shaking for the uh, shaking for the YouTube homies, and you ain't invite Artie Art Baby and Matt uh, <laughs> and uh, Jim Jordan from Ohio. 28-year-old 28-year-old Rhode Island state senator who is a black female and she stood up on her arms and you know did a handstand and did this twerking thing where she's shaking her ugly behind and uh being dirty and then saying vote for Tiara Mac y'all vote <laughs> well, for Tiara Mac well I mean <laughs> We, uh, already are, baby, we didn't vote for you, baby, but, uh, you just, this rude. You did all that and didn't, didn't invite Art, Matt Gates, Jim Jordan, you ain't, <laughs> you ain't invite the alphas or whatnot. So now we like, well, hold up. We wanted to be sitting around and drinking 40 ounces and sipping on this moonshine from Virginia, too. You wanted to be, you, you wanted to hang out with her? <laughs> I mean, yeah, if we go, if we go uh, take politics like that, go ahead, you know, get a couple of joints and a couple of swisher sweets and fill them up with uh, uh, some smoke and, you know, get Matt Gates to bring us a couple 40 out Bud Lights or some uh, Lord <laughs> Bibby, some Art Lizers, and we can just sit out there and drink and, you know, the politi female politicians can be out there twerking and doing all what they want to do. I, I, I mean, shoot, me being an alpha male, that's what I like. I like females. Wow. You know, this lady, this, this, and I use the term loosely, born in 1993, very young lady, uh, first openly queer black person elected to the Rhode Island State Senate, short-haired, short-haired afro wherein she, her, 
queer educator, donut lover, rugby player. So, so what do so what do the black kids got to do when these females got to do? I mean, do we got to do we got to us alpha males got to make rules because y'all don't get uh, understand that y'all in public. And y- y'all are public uh, figures that y'all, it's uh, do's and a don'ts list that y'all supposed to be doing if you uh, pay public figure, uh, figure for the uh, the citizens of the United States. No that, sense, uh, huh? To, yeah, I mean, do we got to make a rule for the, uh, for uh, Jim Jordan that he can't sag his pants and he <laughs> can't wear white beaters and uh, have blunt rolled up swisher sweet blunts in his ear? Do we got to make rules about that or whatnot? Because these black females don't seem to understand how to how to carry themselves, and I don't want to say it's just black females, it's uh, white females and liberals and like, y'all just don't know how to carry yourself. Yeah. You know, you know uh, uh, this lady's uh, also a pro-abortion fundraiser. Uh, She's a mess. So she said she said she knew that the racist was going to say something about her twerking. Well, uh-huh. I'm black and I ain't, I, I, uh, well, I mean, well, I'm black and you know, uh, Go ahead and call me racist. I, I love all people, whether what color they is. But you know, you liberals, y'all love to call people gay that ain't gay, and people that's racist ain't racist. Yeah. And uh, no, uh, we ain't racist because we don't. Uh, you making America look bad, and all these other countries is looking at you, and these other politicians, and you making us look already better than what it looks like in America that you you up here twerking. No, that's not racism, sweetie. Uh. You need some home training, or you need to stop hanging around them hood rats you hanging around or whatnot. Because they, uh, I mean, they ain't teaching. I don't know. She wasn't. I don't know. That wasn't twerking. She. I don't know what she was doing. She need to come around here with some of these females that I be around, and they could teach her how to twerk. Or maybe hey, can take te- te- take you up there. Or maybe what's that Jenny Bus from the Lakers, the one that was uh, stole all that money, uh, PPP loan money. Maybe she can get you how to uh, learn how to do some cheerleading. Uh, Moves for the Lake, the L.A. Lakers, or whatnot, where you can be doing. Give me a T, give me a R, give me a U, give me an M and a P. That's all, man. Maybe if you do that, we'll like you. We can vote for you. Yeah, you know this late this right. this lady. I use the term loosely. She's on Twitter all all this morning, talking about mm-hmm. I twerk for abortion justice, whatever that means. I guess. Justice in her mind is killing the babies. I twerk for mm-hmm. joy. I twerk mm-hmm. for uh, intersex justice, which is you know the herma- hermaphrodites pretending that pretending to turn mm-hmm. the hermaphrodites into victims, which is like the worst thing for them. I twerk for trans rights, and she did the uh, transgender flag. So she's just all messed up. She's confused. I twerk for hashtag twerk for black girl mm-hmm. magic. And she's pretending mm. that, you know, the Republicans are raising money off of her being a degenerate, right? Which, that's fine. Mm. But she's, mm. she's raising money off of being even more degenerate, saying, I twerk for the human right to safe housing. There's no such thing as a human right for safe housing. Mm. What a mess, huh? So, what, what a so sick yeah, woman. So, yeah, what a mess. If she knew anything, that she would understand that half these black females and these... Um, uh, Negroes is like myself in my uh, community, my people, the Negroes, not no African Americans, Negroes, the half of them at 13 and about 13 to 14 and on up in the teens, that's part of the reason why they're having babies and getting pregnant at an early age is because they doing what this politician is doing, twerking and don't know how to sit their butts down. Right. All that twerking stuff ain't going to do nothing but uh, end up in uh, unmarried production of kids and un- unwed like uh uh, kids, you see what I'm saying? Having right. kids out of wedlock. That's all that twerking's gonna do. Yeah, that's true. Rape, rape, and out of wedlock uh, kids. That's all that twerking's gonna do. So she need to wake up and get off of that uh, that uh, that woke talk, because uh, we all know that that woke, just like Trump said, you're gonna end up broke, and Joe Biden's doing that right now by keep pushing all this money into the economy. Y'all fought the $5 that my grandfather had back in the 1960. It don't it don't equal up to nothing but two dollars or a dollar and fifty. So yeah, y'all keep li- listening to this woke stuff, and they keep pushing this money into the economy. Yeah, the your little your little five dollars ten years from now will only be a dollar fifty, just like it happened to my it's happening to my papa right now. So yeah, they keep up with this stuff. They're gonna be broke, and everybody's gonna be looking at them laughing because they silly. They don't know what they doing. They yeah. twerking. We in the middle of a war, and they don't even know. But God bless you, Hank, and I catch you in a little bit. Sounds good, Art. I appreciate you. Take care. Happy White History Month. You tell them. And tell them White History Month and we still rolling with Trump. And I don't care who likes it. Nice. Right on. Take care.
That was, he was talking about Tiara Mac. Is, doesn't Tiara mean like a little princess crown thing? Isn't that what that's supposed to be? A princess of the world. You know, this prin- the prince of the world is supposed to be like Satan. Maybe she's Satan's daughter. Not, probably not maybe, right? Probably not maybe. But, you know, another misguided... What, is she, is she a millennial or is she an old Gen Zer? 28 years old. Anyway, what a mess. You know, I still can't f- see. I don't, I'm trying to see if I can see... Uh, what's his name? Master Jim. I see no Master Jim. I see mentions of Master Jim, but I don't see Master Jim. Unblock me. I know he's a mod. I have him as a, I put him as a mod. I put him as an approved user. I unblocked him, but I think he has me blocked. And somehow, every now and then, there, there is somebody who gets, who is invisible to Hake, even though Hake is either the admin or the mod for my show, for J, JLP, for The Fallen State. There was a guy, um, one, there was one sleazy guy who had me blocked, who I couldn't see him. But he got himself banned, fortunately. And, uh, there was another guy who was a boomer or a Gen X guy who had, had me blocked somehow, but he didn't know how to unblock me because he's such a boomer or a Gen Xer. That's why I hate those people. (laughs) I love boomers, but I hate boomer Gen Xers, okay? (laughs) Anyway, what a mess. What a mess. Terrible. (laughs) Uh, uh, I'll put a test. Do you see me? Uh, Master Jim. (laughs) I don't know. Oh, man. But, anyway. Don't hate. Do as I say, not as I do. Let's read some Super Chats, shall we? Uh, Before I get into some real stories here. Korlik over there on streamlabs.com slash the Hake report says there are cases where weed is good, he says. That's according to him. I neither endorse nor uh, condemn, I guess. My dad has multiple sclerosis, MS, and it slows down the overactive firing of his neurons. Neurons. Once in a while, I smoke with him, so he isn't always smoking alone. JLP nails it on the head. It lowers your consciousness, like alcohol. Yeah. Um. All right, Corlick. I appreciate it. Based America first with the super chat on streamlabs.com slash the hate report. Did you see the new gold slash American flag design of the Trump N757AF? I didn't realize it had America first in the N number. Let's see. As in America first, AF. Uh, hmm. Refinishing a campaign airplane. Wonder what that could mean. Oh. Okay. So N757AF. I think that must be a airplane model, or a jet model, right? Trump N, Trump Air Force One, N757AF. Um, I have not seen that, but thanks for the heads up on that. Um, I appreciate that. Trump Force One. Hmm. Well, thank you. It's a Boeing 757, I think. Oh, uh, thanks for the tip, uh, Base America First. Maybe that means that, would that mean, could that mean that tr- Trump is running for 2024? Willie Powell with the Super Chat says, keep up with the good work, my friend, blessings. Well, thank you, Willie Powell. I appreciate it. And by the way, I am remiss in, uh, putting up... An update on my subscribe star. Did you know that Hake has a subscribe star? Subscribestar.com slash the Hake Report. I put exclusive stuff up stuff up there. I was doing it every week, sometimes more than once a week. But uh mm, but I haven't 
done in a couple of uh, days. What a mess. Um, couple of days, couple of weeks. <laughs> and you know, also, quick little announcement. I will be on um, Modern Day Debate is the plan. Modern Day Debate. You know how I do l- these debates? Appearances on other shows, thehakereport.com slash appearances. I am supposed to be on uh, Modern Day Debate, debating, is there a war on men? I'm going to debate against Stardust is the plan. And actually, it may be I Hypocrite. Remember I Hypocrite? He's on Twitter, and he's on YouTube. He's interviewed Jesse Lee Peterson before. I, comma, Hypocrite. Um... Master Jim called to say thanks, but thanks for nothing, Master Jim, because I can't see you still. What in the world? So weird. Glitchy YouTube just isn't the same since it's been run by uh, those feminists, that feminist woman. Uh, Yeah, um... (laughs) Uh, Master Bibby says, hey, I think you're losing it. There was never a Master Jim. You're working too hard. Get some rest, homie. Um, (laughs) am I going crazy? Okay, so, yes, indeed. Um, is there a war on men? Stardust versus James of the Hake Report, plus more. It'll be I, Hypocrite, perhaps, or somebody. And, um, also that guy whom I debated recently. Uh, who's that guy who used to be conservative and now he's liberal, he's young. He has that wife whom I also debated. Uh, I'm blanking on his name. Hunter Avalone. Yeah. So, right on. Right on. Check that out. The, I, w- I have not put it up on uh, thehakereport.com slash appearances, but if you go to the Hake Report or Hake YouTube channel, you may see it in my uh, appearances, or just check out Modern Day Debate. It's a great channel. I know a lot of you guys get censored on there because you're speaking too, uh, too, uh, brashly, perhaps too, too freely on there. And sometimes the moderators may feel that that's in poor taste or they want to protect their channel, which is understandable. Anyway, let's get, we're almost at the bottom of the hour. We got to get to some, uh, actual content. The Unpresidential Medal of Freedom. How embarrassing. What a disgrace. This reminds me of the uh, Obama administration. Obama! Obama! There was, a, there was a transgender illegal alien. I think it was transgender. Who was like, Obama, let the illegal transgenders across the border. Or something like that. At the White House. And he's like, no, 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 you're in my house. This was under the Obama administration. And now it's the Obama administration continued. This is from the far left female run outlet, The Skim, reporting on the recipients of the Presidential Medal of Freedom from Simone Biles. You know, that black girl who was a little, uh, they're all little, but the little, um, What is that thing where they do tumbling and flipping and stuff like that? Gymnast. (laughs) Thank you. Simone Biles, a black female gymnast. Much hyped. Pretty talented, but she sometimes needed a break. The, The most decorated U.S. gymnast in history. 32 Olympics and world champion medals. Wow. Biles is more than just the GOAT, greatest of all time. She's been a major advocate for mental health and safety for athletes, as well as so-called sexual assault survivors, and more. What a mess. So she's talented, but she's an emotional mess. Poor girl. Or young lady, I guess. Um, To Denzel Washington, you know that black actor who played Malcolm X and other things? The quitter, (laughs) Matt Living the Dream says of Simone Biles. On July 7th, that's today, Sleepy Joe Biden is awarding the nation's highest civilian honor. But if it's coming from Sleepy Joe, then it's no honor whatsoever. It's dishonor. So these people are, it's the Hall of Infamy. And, uh, yeah, Denzel Washington, the actor, black. 
are these affirmative action presidential medals of freedoms? Uh, Sleepy Joe, this is the first time Sleepy Joe has named recipients during his pre- presidency. He was given the Medal of Freedom, so that shows you how, what a disgrace it is. Back in 2017. In 2017? Oh, yeah, it must have been just before Obama left office. Beginning of 2017, Obama was still in office. Can you believe it? What a disgrace. And he gave it to Sleepy Joe Biden. Not that he likes him. It was just a nice gesture. Unlike typical awards ceremonies, you don't have to wait for someone to open the envelope to reveal the winner. Or envelope, if you're one of those people who don't know that it's pronounced envelope. The White House has already released a full list of recipients. 17 so-called Americans who demonstrate the power of possibilities and embody the soul of the nation. The dirty soul, hard work, perseverance, and faith. What do you know about faith? And who've been blazing trails for generations to come. So the first one was Simone Biles. I showed that to you. The next one was Sister Simone Campbell. Sister Simone Campbell. Looks like a white, I don't know. She's been an advocate for economic justice. In other words, she's a communist. She's not, there's no such thing as economic justice. Healthcare policy and immigration reform, meaning she wants the invaders to, to be able to come in freely. All through her work with the Sisters of Social Service and the Catholic Social Justice Organization, which is a, uh, that is an oxymoron. You can't be Catholic and for social justice, at least not if you're the Christian type of Catholic. Um, network where she served as the executive director. So she's a female leader. Gray-haired lady. A little bit chunky. Or is she a nun? Does is, is that say that she's a nun? Nuns on the bus. Whatever that means. Network of... Network nuns on the bus. Dot org. N- nuns on the bus dot org. Whatever that is. I don't endorse that website if you get... If you're... If your uh, computer gets an SDD from that uh, website, don't blame me. I didn't say to go there. I just named the website. Dr. Julieta Garcia. Julieta, Julieta, Julieta Garcia. Nice American name. She's the former president of the University of Texas at Brownsville. Made history as the first Hispanic woman to serve, serve herself, as college president in the United States of America. In 2009, Time Magazine, the far-left enemies of America, Time Magazine, named her one of the best college presidents in the country. Yeah, like they're, they're, like they're a reliable source. Next one, Gabrielle Giffords, also known as Gabby Giffords. All you people keep on saying mildly attractive. I don't say that's mildly attractive, chat. Gabby Giffords, she was the one who got shot in the head. And she's being honored for being shot in the head and then turning into a radical anti-gun nutcase. She was a female politician, Democrat. I call her demon rat, congressman, female congressman. They call her congresswoman, but there's no such thing. From Arizona, seriously injured during a January 2011 shooting. She was shot in the head by that crazy-looking guy who had a crazy-looking face with a black eye. Weird-looking guy. She since co-founded Giffords, a nonprofit aimed at ending so-called gun violence. No such thing. She's a mama. A mama will increase the violence, pretending that she's against it. Fred Gray! Not to be confused with Freddie Gray, the drug dealer. The drug dealer who got his spine severed when he ran from the cops and got tackled, and then he got put in the back of the van. Freddie Gray, over whom Baltimore rioted with the permission of the uh, black demon rat politicians over there in Baltimore. What a mess. Pray for Baltimore, people. There's some decent people fighting for Baltimore, but there are a lot of indecent people running the show. But no, this is a, this is a different guy. He's Fred Gray, old guy. He may not even... I wonder if he's alive. Fred Gray, he's the attorney who represented Rosa Parks. Rosa Parks. I remember growing up thinking, oh, Rosa Parks, honorable woman. Nope. She's a 
female activist with the NAACP, National Association Against the Colored People, and against America, really. He also, uh, did he also represent MLK, Martin Luther King Jr.? Considered one of the top lawyers for racial justice, which is not justice. Fred Gray. Let's see, was he an Alabama state representative too? Uh, let's see. Fred David Gray Sr., Fred Gray attorney. Born in 1930, is he still alive? Is he still kicking? Yeah, he represented MLK. Ah, uh, let's see, he was in the House of Representatives until 2015. He's 91 years old now, so he was like 85, 84, 83, something like that. Four children, congrats, man. And uh, a preacher. I don't know anything about him, but I don't have a positive... I no longer have any sort of positive impression of the so-called civil rights movement. I think that it has only gotten worse, but I don't know if there was anything good about it even back then. Maybe there were some decent people in there. You know, people get suckered. There's a lot of poisonous stuff that gets even worse over time. Even uh, Nicolas, host of Nick Stream, Nick, Nick Stream, he's pointed out that uh, every conservative organization turns liberal, gets infiltrated by their enemies, and turns evil. It's true. Turns liberal. Everyone. Look at the Israelites or the Jews. Like they used to be conservative and now they're liberal. Or were they ever conservative? I don't know. But it, it's, look at the so-called church, overrun by women now. Liberal women. Not good. So there was probably po- evil with it all the time. Evil in every group. Snakes. Jesus even said, but one of you is a devil among his own disciples. Yeah, so this guy born in 1930. Uh, that's cool. I wonder if he ate pork. You know? And is still kicking. You know who's not still kicking? Steve Jobs. I heard that he's dead. The co-founder of Apple will receive the award posthumously. He died in 2011 after so-called battling, I don't know why they call it battling, pancreatic cancer. The White House said Steve Jobs' vision has led to inventions that have transformed industries and continue to change the way the world communicates. Yeah, he's a guy who, uh, under whom people came up with the iPhone and the iPod and all that stuff. So, uh, and you know, he came out with different computers, Apple computers. Uh, I don't know what he was really like. That may be an okay one. But he's dead anyway, so what's the... Uh, anyway. Father Alexandro Carlotsos. Carlotsos. There he is. Is that like a Catholic name? Oh, no, Greek Orthodox, Archdiocese of America, who has counseled a number of presidents over the years. Uh, these are the people who are being awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by Sleepy Joe Biden, who is in no position to honor anyone, he brings dishonor to everyone he honors. Really? And these are not necessarily honorable people. I don't know anything about this Greek Orthodox guy, Father Alexandro Carlotsos, except that he's being honored by uh, Sleepy Joe, which is a count against him, honestly. It's a count against him. Kazir Khan, I remember this guy. Kazir Khan. This is that phony guy who ran against Trump or he campaigned with the demon rats. He's a, he's a Muslim. A gold star father, Khazir Khan. K-H-I-Z-R, uh, last name Khan, K-H-A-N, nice American name. And he held up the Constitution, the nerve and the gall. No, I don't think I'll get to a clip 11 today, guys. I don't know if I have any clips. Uh, sorry to say, I guess. Gold star father who made headlines in 2016 because the mainstream media loved him because he 
pretended to do a zinger against our greatest president, Donald J. Trump, at a speech at the Demon Rat National Convention. What kind of Muslim supports demon rats? Pro-abortion, pro-LGBTIQ, pro-feminist, uh, everything evil that the Muslims are supposed to reject. Kazir Khan criticized our greatest president, Donald J. Trump's anti-Muslim statements before he became president, right? Before he even won the presidency. I mean, he had it in the bag. We all knew that this... We, I knew that Trump was going to win. When I saw him not backing down from every true statement, regardless of the uh, backlash and the people trying to de... Um, you know, the, the company, the businesses trying to boycott him and kick him out of different things, and he didn't care. He stood on, he stood on the truth. Didn't even care when they tried to accuse him of so-called sexual assault and all that mess. I knew he was going to win. I knew he was going to win when he showed no fear against the, the women, the blacks. Get him out of here, you know, the Black Lives Matter radicals. Don't you want to just punch him in the face? I disavow, but, you know, you can sympathize with the uh, outrage at these people disrespecting the country and their fellow people. Anyway, uh, Kazir Khan criticized our greatest president, Donald J. Trump's, before he was president, anti-Muslim statements and policies. Well, he said he didn't even have a policy. He was, he was running for office. He said, I'm calling for a total and complete, something like that, ban on Muslims coming into the country. <laughs> uh, hate getting violent. No. I disavow violence. Or most of it, anyway. Much of it. But he said, you know, this was after a crazy Muslim terror attack, and we don't know who these people are. Why, are, why do they need to be coming in here? They're, so that their children end up committing terror attacks. I don't know, was that, was that after the crazy uh, gay bar terror attack by the uh, guy, the son of the Hillary Clinton supporter? Remember the Pulse nightclub shooting? It might have been after that, I forget. Just a political and metaphysical punch, guys. Metaphorically speaking, of course. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Shout out to Alex Jones, my competitor. Uh, so... He pre- this Kazir Khan guy pretended to be a target of the president. No, you're already in the country, dude. And your son supposedly served... Mostly these people joined the military to serve themselves, get the benefits. That's what they do. But this guy died, I guess, unfortunately. And so this guy is using his dead son as a political gotcha against Trump. And he's willing to be, uh... And he's willing to be, uh... <laughs> what are you talking about, Blark Blark? It's gross. Put you on timeout. Get yourself banned, sicko. Anyway, uh... Just looking at the chat here, guys. This guy's a phony, total phony. He held up the Constitution. Like you care, like even, like any demon rat cares about the Constitution. I call them demon rats. Because that's what they are. (laughs) The White House described Khan as a prominent advocate for the rule of law and religious freedom. Religious freedom was freedom to be Christian. Freedom to be whatever type of Christian, right? It's ridiculous. You guys want to hear more of them? There's so many more. Okay. Oh, man. Or do, it, do you need a break? You need a break? Let's take a break. You rem- remember where you left off. Let me get to, uh... <laughs> I hate this, but let me get to Master Jim. <laughs> in Maryland. M- Master Jim, how you doing, man? Hey, my man. Thanks for letting me back. I'm sorry you can't see me. <laughs> Did you follow my instructions to go to my uh, about page on my YouTube channel and unblock me? I don't know if that's what's going on, but it's possible that that's what's going on. Did you do that? I will try again, but I've never blocked anyone. I you, keep saying that. You, I know you keep I saying didn't. that, but go go and check because you may well have right. inadvertently blocked me or something. Okay. And th- and for the listeners, and- I apologize for doing this, but it's kind of bugging me too. And, you know, so if this happens to you, like, it's very rare. It's a weird situation. And uh, if not, just switch to be, uh, after five days, switch to your other channel that you made. 
Right, right. Yeah, on. that's what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciate it, though, Hake. You're a man of your word. You tried, and <laughs> I, you know what? I like you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, man. I like being back in the chat. I'm sorry you can't see me. I will look again. I, I, you know, I don't understand. I've never blocked anyone, but I'll look again. It's it's um, a weird thing. I know another. There was another boomer or Gen Xer guy who, uh, for some reason, I could not. Either I could sometimes I could see his YouTube comments, but I was not even allowed to reply. So try like commenting on Jesse's channel and on my channel today too, and I'll see. If I do. That's, and uh, I will see in the comment section whether I'm able to reply to you, because sometimes that's that happens. There was this. I've replied to you eight times now. I think. Right. <laughs> I guess you can't see. Me. So anyway, you, so you can see I, me, but I can't see you. Right. Okay. That's the way I felt. Okay. Hey, uh, I call them demon rats too. Nice. Because um, <laughs> you know they 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 have no remorse. We're always arguing about the rhinos, but. Yeah. They just vote for everything that's evil and, and you know, full pattern. They, right. they're, they're lock, stock, and barrel. Yeah, you know, um, we had one guy, what's that one guy, was it West Virginia or something, um, holding things up, one Democrat. Oh, yeah, the, the, uh, it down. the, the pro-life guy, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we got one Democrat, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean... Well, it's just a fact. Anyways, I appreciate it. Just want to call in and let everybody know I'm good. Thanks. And right. I'm sorry you can't see me. I appreciate you, man. Well, thank you, Master good Jim. Job. I, I modded him. All right, happy White History Month. I may right. have, just a warning, Master Jim, I may have to unmod you. So, uh, just after that. <laughs> but I'm a good mod. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Be Later. Very, all right. Bye. <laughs> Take care. Just a note to the mods, be, uh, don't be too trigger happy with the, I mean, I, I do appreciate you guys looking out and getting rid of the, the, uh, gossip. We don't appreciate gossip. Go gossip somewhere else. Go exercise your freedom of speech to gossip and, and be snakes somewhere else. I mean, snakes are okay, but gossips are not. Because, you know, everybody's a snake. <laughs> and if you got yourself banned, just email the hate report at gmail.com. And hopefully I see it, or DM me on Twitter, at the Hake Report, and uh, show me, like, link me your channel, and I just look into it. All right? Okay. Uh, another call from uh, Shane in Norway. First time, first time caller? Shane in Norway, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How's yourself, James? I'm fine, thank you. Hey, look, I was uh, calling. I was going to actually call Jesse, but I tried him for probably an hour or so. But oh, yeah, sometimes through. people uh, can't get through if the lines are full on the Jesse Lee Peterson show. Yeah, I, I get that, yeah. What did you want to uh, talk about? Yeah. Well, I was actually going to call about Malachi 4, 4 to 6. Uh, Jesse goes on about this all the time. He talks about... Uh, Fathers returning to their children and children returning to the fathers, yeah? Yeah, what a nice what a nice passage, huh? It's fantastic, uh, but just it, I think it's Malachi four. It talks about it talks about in the end times that Elijah will return. Yeah, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. This is Malachi four, Correct. five and six. Yeah. Who uh, before and the great and awesome day of the Lord prophesy, comes. Yeah? He will turn the hearts yeah. of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children yeah. to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter, utter destruction. Wow. Utter destruction. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I think it's really interesting. I, I don't know, it's because Jesse keeps quoting this, and I know, you know, I've been, my parents were Christians, and of course I've been raised, I went to a Christian boarding school and everything. So. Yeah. We learned about Christianity. I've learned about it all my life. Doesn't mean I know God, but as Jesse rightly says, you have you can't learn about God intellectually. Right. But what's interesting is that in church you're taught 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 about Christ and how you have to return to Christ, and through Christ you get to God. Yeah. You know, going down to the front and confessing that Jesus is Lord, and you know. 
Repentance that's not what they're talking about when they say... Well, that's not what the Bible is talking about when it talks about through Christ, though, but other people interpret it to be that, yeah. Correct, correct. Uh-huh. No, you're, you're 100% correct. That is the interpretation. That's correct. Yep. And Jesse is right. That is probably not the right interpretation. Yeah. I, I believe it is through forgiveness, like he, like he speaks about. So my question is, okay, so does Malachi 6 or 4, 4 to 6, however you want to look at it, does that mean that in the end times that Elisha, Elijah, sorry, he will be the one who will prophesy and speak about, you know, returning fathers to their children and children to their fathers? Does that mean that this is the end times now and Jesse could well be that person? I don't know. I think it's very interesting because it's meant to be at the end times, and what have people before this time, have they been sons of God? Some some of them certainly have, I think. Some people. I just, I, I've never thought of this before, uh-huh. but I pondered it the other day. Because maybe God has waited for this time for that to happen. Yeah. Well, I would not. It's just, it's I would just not want ponder. to get into. I, I, yeah, don't, I know. I know. It's just. It's just a pondering I've had. It's just like wow. Sure. But don't get into really, speculation. I mean, don't. Don't make. Don't come yeah. to any conclusion. No, I mean I know we have to wait and see. Like right? we've got to just. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. I just wondered. You know, I'm just. Wow, I saw this and I thought, wow, what does this mean? So you you, you exactly see Jesse as, as maybe possibly like an Elijah. That's what I'm trying to say, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, look, I'm not saying he is. Right. I'm just saying it's interesting. His message is very much like what it says in Malachi. Right. Yep. Right? That That's my point. Yeah. That's my point. It's no, Fair it's enough. It's just a very, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's fair. My point. I see it as very, very biblical as well, man. All these people who say, oh, it's, it's unbiblical. No, it's quite biblical. It's just that these no, people have a... No, it's very biblical. Yeah, and, these people have a wrong And that's why I asked. Yeah, says. I just, yeah, it was just something that hit me the other day, and I was like, wow. Yeah. That is, uh, that is something weird. Yep. Or something wonderful. I don't know how to put it, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Thank you, Shane. Great call. Interesting. Hope you're able to get through on the JLP show. I will try, yeah. All right. Well, happy White History Month to you, man. Yeah, you too. I'm glad you you guys celebrate this. I think it's a great idea. Are you Norwegian? No, I'm from New Zealand, actually. Okay, you sound like you're from New Zealand or something. Nice. Yeah, um from down under, yeah, but I've been here for 12 years now, so. Okay. Well, let's make Norway great again. Or you and uh, David over there. <laughs> Take care, man. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, it would be great to make Norway great again, yes. Yeah. Okay, well, bless you guys, yeah? Thank you. You guys do a great work. Appreciate it, Shane. Take care. Yeah. All right. Yeah, bye now. Bye. Bye. <laughs> uh, boy. Real quick, let me get to, let's see if we can solve this once and for all. Luca in Michigan. Luca, how are you doing, man? Doing great, hey. And Happy you're in birthday. Michigan, right? Is it Michigan? Yeah, Michigan this time, usually Indiana. Okay. Sounds right. I'm a traveling man. Right on. So, yeah, with the Master Gym thing, I was just uh, creating a live stream, and in the settings on my desktop, on my laptop, I was able to find uh, in the settings, like, a list of all the people that were blocked from my chat. Right. Because, you know, moderators can bl- block people or uh, hide them or whatever it's called. So yes. I was able to, you know, take Jim off of there and other people. But now I'm trying to look back through it, and I can't find where the setting is. It was oh, no, while I was, I was creating the video. I was able to find that setting, too, but... I happened to see Master Jim from a, from a different account, from either JLP or Bond or something, and I was able to go, since I'm a mod, I was able to f- go to his channel 
and I was able to switch to the Hake Report channel and then unblock him that way. Um, okay. And I, I didn't, I never saw him in my hidden users section in the uh, when you go to. <laughs> this is sorry, people. I, I mean, not sorry, but forgive me, people. But anyway, let's talk some shop, right? Okay, so I yeah. went to YouTube Studio and then I go to settings and then I go to community and then I scroll yeah. down to uh, hidden users. And I have a ton yep. of hidden users. And, uh, yeah, and I s- said, show all 357 more, or 657 more, or some, however, many, however many hidden users I have. And I wow. hit Command F for find Master Jim. I see him in approved users, and I see him as, believe it or not, it may be uh, unwise, but uh, one of my moderators, too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you got to do that because people keep getting banned and, and right. they can't be banned if they become a mod. I'd already you know, unblocked is. him, but maybe one of my mo- other mods has it out for him. Or maybe he just oh, says yeah. very unwise things and gets himself blocked, honestly. Who knows? Yeah, he does. Yeah, you got to not drink too much when you're in the chat. Right. It's <laughs> Day drinking is... I, I disavow day drinking or at least being so shameless about it. Be, have some shame, be quiet, keep your dignity. Yeah. And show respect. Yeah, we appreciate Jim and all of his support. Just gotta have moderation. Yep. <laughs> yes. Temperance. Nice, man. Yeah, I'm just up here celebrating the 4th of July. Happy White History Month, everybody. Yeah, indeed. When's your actual birthday? Isn't that coming up? Ten days, or the oh. 17th anyway. July 17th. <laughs> I was saying everybody should not celebrate on your birthday since we celebrate every other day. Of I the know. Year. <laughs> yeah. They're starting to confuse me. Like are they are they actually thinking it's my birthday or are they just wishing me a happy birthday? It's yeah, funny. Quite confusing to people True. on the outside. <laughs> yeah. But I just turned forty and I'm about to turn forty one. <laughs> yeah, welcome to that forty one club. Yeah. I, we'll see if I get there. Let's not you. jump ahead of ourselves, but wish me well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make it. Yeah, I'm looking so. forward to your debate with Hunter. He's going to have to go to a safe space again. I'm told that the other guy on that uh, on that setup is not I hypocrite, but is uh, who's on my team, uh, Alex Stein. Prime time. Oh, nice. Prime time 99, Alex Stein. So Yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah. So that would be a, I'd be happy with either I, Hypocrite, or Alex Stein and, uh, nice. versus, versus Hunter Avalone and uh, Stardust, the lady. Nice, yeah, man. She, she's a man. <laughs> yeah, right on, man. Look forward to it. Keep up the great work. Hakamania running wild. Nice. Take care, Luca. Take care, brother. All right. Um... I'm going to get to more of these so-called Medal of Honor recipients. One of them is a maverick. (laughs) Oh, what a joke. What a joke. And I will get to more of your calls, guys. What else do I want to cover? Oh, yeah, the backstabbers. uh, Maybe a people-pleasing little article thing. See if I can have some uh, reaction to that. And now, though... We're close to the top of the hour. Let's listen to some music. We've been listening to Volmar, V-O-L, L, two L's, M-A-R. This track is entitled Waiting Up for Sue. Waiting Up for Sue is the one. Here we go, guys. Enjoy. And uh, I'll be right back for hour two. Hang tight.
should pay me to do his vocals, this Canadian David. When it's dark outside, the moon is golden bright, I won't turn off the light off, hold you so close and tight. Isn't the West Coast beautiful? Coffee shop music, says Ragtag Army. Yeah. I'm waiting up for you. Justin Bomar. Please wake up, sorry, soon. Please wake up, sorry. A little soon. bit depressive, but nice. Please wake up, sorry, soon. Please wake up, <laughs> very soon. One cheating girlfriend away from suicide music, says Kevin Howe. Ouch. I want this at my funeral, says Nor- Norfolk. Uh, Reminds me of Stretch Armstrong. Well, guys. Wasn't that nice? That is Justin Volmar. He is a Christian or was. I had to mute. This is Jacob34. Thank you guys for bearing with me through that beautiful music. I liked it anyway. I know it is a little bit, uh, silly. Brandon M says, I'd rather hake, I still rather hake have I hypocrite than Alex Stein. He gets way too emotional, he says. Okay. Um, guys, <clears throat> before I get, uh, back to this unpresidential medal of freedom, hey, why do you have a Klan flag on your laptop? Excuse me, this is the beautiful Southern flag, man. It's not the Klan flag. I mean, the Klan, the Klan may fly that flag because many of them were, uh, the Confederate heroes, maybe, or soldiers, anyway. I don't know. Some of them may have been heroes. I heard that the the clan started in reaction to the feds occupying their land. They didn't appreciate the, those northerners meddling in their affairs. And maybe some of them turned bad. I don't know. I don't care about the clan. I'm talking about the beautiful south. People people act like, oh, the clan. Give me a break. But yeah, you don't know anything about them. I say. Uh, yes, the beautiful South. Much maligned, much dragged through, much drug through the mud. Okay, uh, let me get to a first time caller, Gilbert in California. Gilbert, what's up? How are you doing? Hey, James, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. H- Happy White History Month, and I do like that flag on the back of the computer there. Right on. <laughs> Happy White History uh-huh. Month to you as well. Right on, man. Hey, I wanted to make a comment about that previous caller where he was talking about uh, turning the hearts of the fathers to the children. You know, the, at the, was that Malachi 4-6 or 6 four? Something like that. Yeah, 4-6, so I think. Yeah, if, if you look at Luke, I think it's one seventeen. it's fulfilled in John the Baptist. He, was the, he had the spirit of Elijah. Right. And he did the, he did the previous work for where Jesus showed up. He was the one who was turning the hearts of the fathers to the children. Um, that was pretty much kind of fulfilled in there, but I do believe nice. that something like 
something like that's happening now as well. I, I do believe that Jesse, he has that spirit, you know, where, right. It's the same you know, spirit. I've been, I've been listening to him for years and I could just see it. He's, he's, he's got it. You know? Right. Yeah. Good point. I don't know. I, yeah, I just they, wanted to make that. Like, yeah, Jesus actually told one of the uh, uh, disciples, Elijah, they said, oh, I thought Elijah was supposed to come first. And he said, Elijah has come first. And they rejected him yeah. or they killed him or something. And then they realized yeah, he was and, talking and, about John the Baptist. Not that he was actually yeah. Elijah, but he was a, he was a, an Elijah. Elijah was like a, uh, well, he was a prophet back in the Old Testament and he warned the people. Warned the uh, kings and everything. Yeah, it's like, yes, he, he, about a week or two ago, he had somebody up there who was trying to say that he was a reincarnation, but that's not what, it was It was the spirit right. of Elijah that was in, you know, just like, uh, you know, there's the whole thing with Melchizedek, where Jesus had, was a, a priest, a high priest, and that spirit of Melchizedek, he wasn't Melchizedek, he was just had that spirit. Right, that God had put into Jesus, and just the same way with John the Baptist. I just wanted to make that comment. I, uh, I just thought that was interesting. Um, and but I, I feel it that that's what's going on now. That you know, I mean, when I try to tell people about forgiveness and going, to, you know, to your parents and forgiving them, that that spirit to me is there. You know, and, it, and yeah. like I, I did it with my mother. I did it with my father. It works, and so you know, because it is a, you know, like you were talking about earlier. You know, we we return to to God through Christ when we have that spirit of forgiveness. Right. And that's how we return, you know, because, you know, even Jesus, Jesus gave parables where he talked about, you know, like, uh, you have to forgive in order to be forgiven. To me, that's, if you don't forgive, you've just committed the ultimate sin. So yeah, because he forgave you all, all forgiveness. He, God forgave you all this debt, and then you're not going to forgive your fellow man? Give me a break. <laughs> yeah, in fact, Jesus gave that one parable about that king. Yeah, where he forgave that servant, and then the guy went out and beat his fellow servant, threw him in jail. He, yeah. he didn't get it. He and then he ended up getting thrown in jail because he didn't do the forgiveness thing. So yep. yeah, I think I think that's all tied together. So. And you see that right happening on, James, today. I'm... You see that you <laughs> see so-called Christians and so-called conservatives who are yep. liberals at heart have anger in their heart, yep. judgment against their fellow man, trying to destroy yeah. God's men. Yeah, because they feel wrong. Anyway, James. Hey, great show. I, I'm enjoying it. I, I'm, I'm off today, so I, I had to take today off, and so I'm, I'm going to catch a show. I don't catch it too often, but you're doing a good job, man. I appreciate right that, Gilbert. It's great to hear from you, man. All right. Call All right again on, sometime care, when you're buddy. free. You as well. Yes, sir. All right. Take care. All right. Wasn't that great? Great call. Josh in Salt Lake City, Utah. Josh, how are you doing? Good morning. Hey, happy White History Month. Thank you. Happy White History Month to you as well. Nice. Um, so I've had a, a question. This kind of relates to what uh, these last couple callers were talking about with the Elijah thing. Okay. Um, have you heard of the term praetorism? I feel like I've... Is it P-R-E? Or preter- maybe it's preterism? I think I've heard of I've heard of it. I forget what it is. It's, it's basically like the idea that the second coming that people talk about and the rapture and all that has already happened. Oh, okay. And that, and that like maybe, maybe Elijah or John the Baptist was the first coming, and that when Jesus came, that was the second coming, and that we're we're already living in like the rapture or the tri- trials and tribulations or whatever. Or I think that from what I understood, it was Jesus came. Are you in the? Are you in like an echoey bathroom or a, or a echoey room with a? Yeah, I'm drywalling in a basement, so oh, there's nothing okay. but drywall down here. Right on. Let me stand right here. This would be better. Okay, just stay close to your phone. I can understand you pretty well. Um, okay. From what I understood, it was like they were saying that Jesus came the first time, and then he died, and then he came back, and that right. was his second. Coming. That's another one of the. So I, that's one other one of the ideas, and then also there's the idea that he came and that was the first coming, and then when um, Jerusalem was sacked in 70 A.D., uh-huh. there was a Roman Roman Jewish war. They're saying that that was um, that that Jesus came then and, and saved them or something. But I was just wondering if you if you uh, ever looked into any of that or what you thought about that. I ha- I haven't really looked into it. I haven't thought much about it. Yeah, I haven't thought about we, it we at just, all, really. I hear a whole lot of uh, 
I call them rapture chasers. A lot of people that are always like, we're always in the end times and everything's the mark of the beast. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't think we should like be worrying about that. The end times can last hundreds of years, perhaps. Who knows? Like, like, what does that even mean necessarily? Like, and I don't know if, I don't know if it's even what they think that it means. I, it tends not to be what people think it means. Yeah. And I think, like, we could always be in the end times. Right. Or, like, yep. You know? Yeah. But uh, then I had one other question. Um, so I'm into, like, I'm into, like, Christian apologetics because I live in Salt Lake City, so there's a lot of, like, I got to talk kind of quiet, but there's a lot of Mormons here. Oh, okay. And, um, and so Christian apologetics is, like, basically talking to, like, the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons. And, um trying to see what they've got wrong and what they've got right and talk to them about it and things like that. Yeah. But, uh, one, one thing that I've, I've seen in the Bible lately is that God calls the angels, his sons. And I always thought because the, the Mormons believe that Jesus and Satan and the angels and the humans that were all brothers and sisters. Oh. And so I thought as, as Christians, we don't believe that we believe that, man is above the angels, but now I've been seeing in the Bible a couple of times that he calls the angels, his sons also. So just wondering what, if you, what you think about that. Oh, I also have no idea about that. In a sense, you could say that we are, since we're all like created by God, but I don't know what that would even mean to us. Like what, what would the significance be of it? If that we were to say, yes, that's how we should think of it. You know what I mean? I don't yeah, know why, would just would, make, why we would care, necessarily. It would make the apologetics wrong, because it would, it would mean the Mormons are right, because if, if the angels are sons of God and humans are sons of God, then, like, I believe Jesus is our brother, but I don't believe Satan is our brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but I, I don't know, could... just some deep questions I wanted to bounce off to you. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe the Mormons are are saying it right, but they're wrong in the in how they're thinking about it. Because a lot of times people will say something is the case, and something may well be the case, but then it's but then they jump to different conclusions about it, or they think that they're making a logical step when it's not an actual logical step. Like yeah. some like some woman in church said that Jesus was born out of wedlock. <laughs> and, uh, I've heard other, I've heard other liberals make some gross, gross, uh, comments about that. Right. That basically God, God did something he shouldn't have done to Mary. Yeah. They, they're just, people are, yeah, people are insane and they jump to weird conclusions because of the evil of their own hearts. And sometimes it may be well-meaning, but they just, they're messed up. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Anyway, man. Yeah. Interesting. Hope, yeah. H- hope that helps. Yeah. Uh, happy birthday. Happy White History Month. Just wanted to ask some, some biblical questions, you know. Right on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why are you into apologetics and arguing with the Mormons and debating them and proving them wrong and stuff? Well, I don't actually... I've never actually debated like a Mormon. I just like watching videos on YouTube of them doing it and stuff. Oh, okay. And I like, I, I feel like as Christians, we need to all be united as one and Mormons say they're Christians, but they don't believe the same things that Christians believe. And, and Catholics don't believe the same thing. And right. You know, the Baptists believe this. And I, I feel like, um, like all these denominations, we shouldn't have this. We need to all be united. So it's good to understand all the different ones. And I don't know, try to figure out, where we're where we're not connecting, you know? Maybe. Kinda. Yeah, maybe. Why well, you you don't think I should be doing that? <laughs> I just know that getting into uh all the all these different arguments and intellectual things can like feed feed the ego and get you into like confusion. Whereas yeah. you can have like a simple life. You know, all this knowledge, knowledge, they say knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And sometimes right. you don't need to necessarily know everything, you know? Yeah. 
yeah, I do. and I have a, you know, that's kind of a thing that I've always had a, a bit of a problem with is I always want to be the know it all and I'm argumentative and yeah, real opinionated and all that. So, so just watch yourself. Yeah, de- definitely. Yeah. yeah. That you don't get too into anything. Yeah. I've never actually like debated anybody like that, like on right, that, but, but I did have some Mormons c- come to my front door and I, you know, I was asking them all these questions about things that I've heard that, yeah, that they believe that I don't believe in. And they kind of don't have an answer. They just kind of, they kind of deflect and they don't answer the question. So I don't know. Right. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know as human beings. So yeah, that's true. Anyway, I appreciate it. Josh, <laughs> nice to hear from you. You want to laugh? Yeah, good show, man. I'm going to. No, I'm just going to get back to this drywalling. <laughs> okay, man. Appreciate that's That's some honest work there, drywalling it is. Yeah, it's a little boring, but <laughs> it makes money. So. Right on. You All wear right. a mask? Take care, man. No, I don't ever wear a mask. <laughs> Whoa. Tough man. <laughs> yes. Right. It's better we'll take for care. your immune system. You just breathe that dust in. Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> All right, dude. <laughs> All right, later. <laughs> Bye. Uh, Before I get back to calls, I will be getting back to you. Hang tight, guys. Let me talk more about these phony people, or I say they're phony. Being honored by Sleepy Joe Biden as if they're honorable men and women, which I don't know if they are. Sandra Lindsay is a black female nurse became the first American to receive a China virus vaccine outside of clinical trials, obviously. If you wanted to be a guinea pig, you could do clinical trials. But she was the first supposed supposed non-guinea pig. She's become a prominent advocate for vaccines and mental health for health care workers. A female, a black female. Pretty dark. Mildly attractive. I don't know, you can't really see her face because she's covering half of it, or more than half, maybe. They say your eyes are halfway down your head, so she's covering less than half of her face. But it's a significant less than half. You know? Significant. Uh, And, you know, I've bashed the females who are, except for Lisa. Well, I've bashed Lisa, too, perhaps, maybe. Um... (laughs) <laughs> Lisa says, by the way, Lisa, our resident uh, medical expert, says, that's actually not tough. That's pretty stupid. Sorry. Referring to breathing in that uh, chalk dust, chalk-like dust, as a, uh, as a drywaller. Referring to my prior caller. It's pretty stupid. You got to uh, wear a mask to protect your lungs from that powder. Um, if you're sanding that, that drywall dust, man, don't act like you're too tough. But anyway, (laughs) BB, BB Bear 42 says about this Lindsay, Sandra Lindsay woman, that she has a mildly attractive five head, big, which is to say big forehead. Um, you know, they put women, they prop up these females as nurses and doctors and all that stuff in the medical industry. And a lot of these women can't handle stress. They can't handle pressure. And, um, they're, they're evil. They are manipulative. They are, um, not really practicing what they preach. They get, they put IVs on themselves to get, to get drunk, but also just put IVs with water. (laughs) <laughs> so they can party and not suffer the consequences of partying hard. They, uh, scaremonger to the mainstream media, which in turn scaremongers to the rest of us, pushing, oh, get your flu shot. Oh, we're being overwhelmed. Because you know how women get so easily overwhelmed? <laughs> this is my theory, my conspiracy theory, or cultural degradation theory. You can order that to your house. Have someone set up an IV if you're hungover. 400 bucks, says Nicolas. He's seen. Not, not done it. Seen. Um, heard about it. Um, 
So I'm not for these. Oh, these are our. These are the front line. They're the ones who are responsible in part for fear mongering. I don't know about her specifically, but she's prominent advocate for vaccines and mental health for healthcare workers, right? Meaning. There are some healthcare workers who would not want a vaccine necessarily. They, they just don't trust it or whatever. Does that mean that she's one of their enemies? I don't know. Maybe so. And so-called mental health for healthcare workers because they get easily stressed out. But is she a Christian? Is she like for m- men and uh, fathers? Because that's the best thing for your uh, mental health to have a good father and to not hate men. But most of these women hate men and manly thinking, like Trump showed, manly thinking. Let's not shut down the country in the name of the China virus. Oh, the, sh- the, the pandemic really hurt the economy. No, your overreaction to this scamdemic hurt the economy, you know? Anyway, that's enough on her. Here's the maverick that they wanted to promote. John McCain. <laughs> Like Steve Jobs, the longtime so-called Republican senator, rhino Republican, from Arizona, whom, to my shame, I voted for him, uh, will receive the award posthumously. He passed away, meaning died, expired from brain cancer in 2018. He was a cancer on society, really. And he has been remembered as a public servant. No, he's not. Who received a purple heart for his service in Vietnam. And this guy, he was captured, he was a POW, he was allegedly tortured, and had it rough over in Vietnam. We flew him home, he got special treatment, and he's been, he was a phony politician resting on his laurels. Trump said, you know, this guy dismissed Trump supporters, who are honorable people, true American patriots, as the crazies. Trump brought out the crazies. And yeah, there's some crazy Trump supporters, but... He's smearing all of us. I mean, this guy's an, an evil person. He was a rhino who hated, who hates America, hated America. And I'll show, I'll prove it to you that he hated America. He was for, um, wasn't he part of the Gang of Eight? He wanted amnesty for the illegal aliens. He's like, oh, Obama's not an, no ma'am, Obama's not an Arab. He's a nice man who would make a great president. Not that I wouldn't make a better president. And I voted for that sucker. What a shame. People wanted to blame uh, his running mate, the female, whom I liked too for a while. For a long time I liked her. Uh, Sarah Palin. But no, I blame him. He's a coward. He's weak. Or he was. Anyway, now he's dead. Well, rest in peace, John McCain. But you don't deserve the Medal of Freedom. You you weren't for freedom. Smeared people as racist and nutcase. Anyway, what's wrong with Arizona? Here's the next uh, Medal, of, Medal of Freedom recipient. Diana Nash. Looks like a POC female. She organized some of the most important so-called civil rights campaigns of the 20th century. Founded the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, and worked closely with MLK Jr., Martin Luther King Jr. So she was a, looks like, a, I guess, a light-skinned black lady. No. Not for her. Here's another one being honored. This lesbian woman. Isn't she lesbian? Purple-haired uh, Megan Rapinoe. You know her as the Olympic gold medalist and two-time women's World Cup champ. No, I don't. I don't know her as that. But she's also been a key player in the field in the fight to close the gender pay gap on and off the field. So she's a phony conspiracy theorist or man-hater woman. Jealous of men. Yeah, the women's team got what they wanted and more. To get paid like men as if they're bringing in, raking in the bucks like the, men, the men's teams are. Sorry, but women's soccer is not entertaining and nobody likes it compared to the men. People like to see actual, actual talent and actual feats of, of true uh, amazing uh, athletic prowess. Which the women, they do pretty well, but not... Uh, just not against junior highers or high schoolers, right? Boys. Boys are uh, better soccer players than them. It's a fact. Look it up. <laughs> and, uh, no. Evil, nasty woman this woman is. Megan Rapinoe. And she's also a radical lesbian. 
I think. She's a misandrist, which means she hates men. She hates everybody. Anyway, uh, Alan Simpson. Republican served as Wyoming senator for 18 years. During that time, he was a major advocate for so-called marriage equality. Okay, so he wasn't a Republican. He was a rhino. Marriage equality, meaning the, there's no such thing as marriage equality. It's a meaningless term, but they're pretending that it's so-called same-sex marriage means marriage equality. And campaign finance reform. He retired back in 1996. Richard Trumpka, White House remembered Trumpka as an outspoken advocate for social and economic justice. There's no such thing as either of those things. Led twi- Oh, this guy was a union guy. In other words, he was a commie thug. Uh, he, was a, he led 12.5 million members of the AFL-CIO. In other words, he was a fat cat. Or am I wrong? Federation of dozens of unions for more than 10 years. He died last year. Oh, okay. At the age of 72. Rest in peace, Richard Trumpka. Brigadier General Wilma Vaught broke multiple glass ceilings. These are, these are people honored by Sleazy Joe. Broke multiple glass ceilings as she rose through the ranks of the U.S. military. Oh, gosh. Becoming the mo- one of the most decorated women in history of the armed forces. Vaught retired in 1985. Oh, yeah, she was Rambo. Give me a break. Denzel Washington. Presidential Medal of Freedom. You've seen him in the front of the camera. He's already got quite the trophy chest. Two Oscars, Golden Globes, Tony Award, and more. Aside from being a Hollywood star, he's a national spokesperson. Spokesman. There's no such thing as a spokesperson. You feminists. Uh, for the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, more than two decades. That's nice, I guess. I don't know. He's a liberal. Raul Izaguir led the National Council of La Raza, Latino advocacy organization, for more than 30 years, served, so-called served himself, as a U.S. ambassador for the Dominican Republic under the Obama administration. What a, what a disgrace. These people aren't friends of America. What a disgrace. How embarrassing. But that's Sleepy Joe bringing shame upon America. Bringing shame. So wrong. Uh, oh, Daniel, just so you're aware, Dean is banned from the show. He's, he got himself banned. So, Dean, you're banned from the show already. You don't remember that? Bye. Okay, um, but thank you, Daniel. I appreciate it. Oh, there was a caller I wanted to get to about that uh, Jay Land Walker or blah blah blocker guy, but he hung up. Anyway, I have I have more stuff to cover. Uh, more dishonorable people. There's a very disloyal person apparently, and I had like a positive impression of this guy. Um. Or at least of his name. I didn't have a negative one anyway. Mick Mulvaney, former U.S. Uh, representative and from the House of Representatives, 54 years old, so called Republican, Freedom Caucus. He founded the Freedom Caucus, I guess. Something like that. Mick Mulvaney. And he was the uh, special envoy for Northern Ireland, he was the White House Chief of Staff. He was in the Office of Management and Budget. In other words, he was with Trump, with Trump a lot. And so I don't know what he's exactly saying here, but I don't know. I don't know. This is a quote shared by Kami Nonsense Network, CNN. It was anarchy. It was chaos. It was a clown show. And he's talking about, uh, that's Mick Mulvaney talking about, uh, the late days of the Trump White House. And it may have been anarchy, chaos, clown show, because there are some very disloyal people resigning during the White House over the January 6th thing. Some, you know, Trump hired women and un- very unchristian people. And that's kind of his fault, honestly. But he's such a nice guy, you know, he's too nice. Remember he, he hired that evil woman, Omarosa? 
and she turned on him. Ridiculous. This guy is former chief of staff to our greatest president, Donald J. Trump. Oh, there's Mick Mulvaney. Well, looks like he's not handling life well there. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Have I ever looked stressed? Uh, Mulvaney, Mick Mulvaney, shared his reaction to the Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony. Cassidy Hutchinson, the female who was something, I don't know, female aide to something. Before the January 6th Unselect Committee, saying he was really frightened by the West Wing's strategy at the time, or lack thereof. So this guy's, you know, essentially a, uh, a weakling. Known to be a fiscal conservative. Willing to shut down the government under Obama, which was, that's a positive thing. He was from South Carolina, the beautiful South. Shout out to the beautiful South, but, uh, I don't know. On January 7th, Mulvaney reported that he resigned the day before as special envoy for Northern Ireland following the storming of the U.S. Capitol. He resigned. What's that have to do with you? What a coward, in my opinion. Then he was hired as an on-air contributor for far-left enemies of America, CBS News. He had had a history of promoting Trump's supposed false claims and attacking the press. But, uh, you know, he may have been just another establishment politician and a snake. And, you know, Trump had to hire a lot of establishment people to be able to work with the establishment, right? So, I don't know. Sounds weak to me, though. Speaking of weakness... Let's talk about this. Um, You can call in, by the way. You can call in. 888-775-3773. I want to talk about this weakness, though, that people call people-pleasing. I saw this on Pocket. You know, Pocket, they're promoted by uh, Firefox, which is Mozilla. Enemies of the people, enemies of the Christians, Firefox is, and Mozilla is. They turned, speaking of disloyalty, they turned on their own founder, co-founder anyway, the guy who wrote JavaScript. He created JavaScript. Remember that guy? Nice Christian guy who donated to Prop 8 campaign, which was here in California. We had Prop 8, which we voted for in 2008, when to our shame, we, not me, but the people, elected Obama to office. But, to our credit including the blacks here and the Mormons here. We defined marriage as between one man and one woman. We're like, that's what it is. Duh. And we acknowledge that that's what it is. But that was held up in court. And it was never honored. And then the so-called Supreme Court decided that they decide what marriage actually is. And they came up with this fake marriage equality thing that you just heard about. No such thing. Well, this guy supported it, and he was the, one of the top dogs at Mozilla and Firefox, and the enemies of America, which include the phony SJW tech industry employees, they turned on the guy because they're stupid. Sorry, kids, but it's true. In the biblical sense, they're foolish. <laughs> I'm trying to justify saying stupid in front of the kids. Oh, what a mess. Anyway, here's uh, Pocket, which is promoted by Firefox. It's female-oriented and female-minded, but sometimes they have interesting info. So let's look into it together, shall we? I don't have any screenshots to share with you, so you're going <laughs> to you're gonna have to uh, f- listen closely. How to tell if you're a people pleaser. I'm sick of that word. But anyway, the eight signs that you're too nice. Nice is not good, by the way. But too nice sounds nice, doesn't it? Anyway, uh, why it's impacting your well-being. Yes, there is such a thing as being too nice, according to a psychologist. This was promoted from Stylist, probably from a couple of years ago. Who knows? It's an article written by a female named Amy Beecham. Don't know anything about her, except that she wrote for a stylist. At least this article. When it comes to the people we love, 
You don't love anybody. <laughs> we often put their needs over ours and do everything we can to make them happy. Such a mama thing, huh? Yes, Trump hired the swamp. He's a people pleaser. He's too nice. <laughs> it's true. Caring for and protect- but I love Trump, and I- total respect to that guy. Like any of us would do any better. We talk big, and yeah, we have more based views that we out- come out with, but come on. He played the game, and he- anyway. Caring for and protecting other people's feelings is what helps us form some of the most deepest and meaningful relationships of our lives, writes this Amy Beecham woman, I presume. However, when the balance of putting others' needs before our own becomes too skewed, it's an indication something needs to change. It may sound strange, sometimes we can be too nice. Sociotropy. That's an actual word. Sociotropy. Sociotropy. Whatever. Too nice equals too weak, says Lisa. And she's an expert on uh, medicine. And it's a fact. Over there, shout out to the Facebook crew. <laughs> Uh, sociotropy, however you pronounce the word, more informally known as people-pleasing, is defined as the tendency to value relationships over personal independence. I think it's just you listen to Satan. And you, you don't have God as your God. When you, ha- when you don't, when you doubt, in the book of James it says the man who doubts is a double-minded man. Blown and tossed and buffeted by the winds and the waves. Something like that. I cracked. I'm growing. Something like that. It's true. And you have a whole lot of people like that. And yet they turn around and preach and say, Oh, I was wronged by such and such. And go on a mission to destroy other people. Just so evil. Anyway, often people fear losing relationships and alter their behavior to avoid conflict even if it has a detrimental impact on their own well-being. In an Instagram post liked over 56,000 times, (laughs) psychotherapist female Amber Elizabeth Smith, I'm presuming that's a female, it's a female name anyway, broke down eight signs that you're being too nice and how to recover from people-pleasing. So they get into it. Psycho space therapist. (laughs) Oh, yeah, she's a psycho. And she's a so-called therapist. Yes. Uh, You gotta be psycho to go to these people. Setting boundaries and prioritizing your own well-being isn't something that happens overnight. Acknowledging the signs and making simple steps towards putting yourself first is always a good first place to start. One, you will drop what you are doing to help another person even if it means sacrificing something important to you. If you're a classic people pleaser, you'll prioritize the needs of others before your own. Not necessarily a bad thing, but when you find yourself compromising regularly, it could be a sign that you're in a one-sided relationship and clearer boundaries are needed. Boundaries. I remember these Christian psychologists, Townsend and Cloud or something like that, they wrote this book called Boundaries, and then they wrote another book called Boundaries in Dating, and it became this whole thing, reminiscent of the the purpose-driven life type stuff. It became like a money-making thing. Or whatever you want to call it, but it was uh, interesting. Say no at times. Uh, Another sign, being nice is part of your identity and you fear you must be constantly this way or you will be labeled as fake. Well, it's because you are fake. Even when you're mean, you're, you're fake. Or nice, you're fake. People pleaser is a liar, says Doom Jesus. Everyone wants to be thought of as a nice person, some... Not everybody. That's fake news. Um, Shouldn't come from a fear of being considered otherwise or at the expense of your mental health. It reminds me of this uh, secularizing of wisdom and of uh, the right way to be in life, you know? They try to separate it from God, so they try to go into mental health without God is no mental health at all. You're a nutcase. Making time for yourself, it's like these women trying to give advice to women about being a, a proper person. Anyway, making time for yourself and prioritizing your own needs isn't anything you should feel guilty for. <laughs> women are so guilt-ridden. Isn't it true? It's fact, because they're so judgmental of themselves and others. And yet, they won't admit when they're wrong. Isn't that interesting? 
Um, you feel overly responsible for others' feelings, and you will go to any length not to cause pain, even if that means not standing up for yourself. You better stand up for yourself, said that guy in American History X to the nerd who got beaten up and bullied. So corny, huh? If you find yourself always playing mediator within your family or friendship group, playing mama, t- taking time to find take taking time to find out who you really are and searching for balance in those relationships is an important step to recovering from people pleasing. You often forgive easily and allow other people to remain in your life to repeat with repeat harmful patterns. I don't know, I'm getting I'm getting tired of this. Hold on. Let me see. If you have a toxic friend you just can't cut off, or a draining family member who who is always trauma dumping on you, trauma dumping, also known as complaining, I guess, take time to consider the value they're adding versus damage they're causing. Yeah, don't hang around evil. Don't let people complain or gossip. And if they keep doing it, then you can cut them off. But anyway... When you think someone is upset with you, you try to begin to people please, compliment, and try harder for their approval. You have a history of being nice to avoid harm. This has become a survival skill. Well, I mean, there's a time to do that. There's a time to do that. Like, uh, that's in the Bible. A gentle answer turns away wrath. There is a time for that. For sure. But it, if you get carried away, obviously, not a good thing. You tell people it's okay and comfort them after they hurt you, <laughs> even though it really isn't. Uh, these are the signs that you're a people pleaser. You, feel being, you fear being labeled as selfish, toxic, or not empathetic for having reactions that are not nice. Uh, so, I don't know, they're trying to give you, here, let me see if they give you any good advice here. So, when you think people are upset with you, people please, um, they don't say, they don't give you a a solution for that one. Uh, let's see, they just say, modifying your behavior to accommodate theirs only sets an unhealthy precedent. Okay, that's fine. Um, nobody wants to deal with conflict when they don't have to. But you find yourself bending over backwards to keep the peace. You're likely dealing with a lot of emotional burden. Freeing yourself from the expectations of others is both liberating and good for your mental health. I hate these words. I hate this language. Um, Expressing how you truly feel, especially in a tense situation, isn't always easy. But if you find yourself excusing bad behavior and being unable to speak your mind, it might be a sign you're being taken for granted. You need to set clearer guidelines of the honesty and mutual respect you expect from a relationship. That's nice. You fear being labeled as selfish, toxic, or not empathetic for having reactions that are not nice. We always want to be seen in the best light possible. I guess you should, uh, accept that you won't. We shouldn't let the fear of being considered a bad friend stop us from responding to other people's toxic, I hate that word, behavior. You sh- it reminds me, I was listening to this guy on uh, Mike Tyson's podcast. You know I subscribe to Mike Tyson's YouTube channel. The one uh, Hot Boxing. Because he, he, you know, Jesse visited the thing. Jesse Lee Peterson visited his uh, studio. He's like, hey, come in here, let's talk. And they talked, and it was cool. And Nicolas of Nickstream was there. And they showed the Amber Rose thing about Slutmaker. Don't be a slut maker, or about a man who has sex with a lot of women is a slut maker. And uh, he loved it, but it hasn't come out, you know, which is understandable. You know, there's a lot of uh, PR public relations types and uh, producer types holding people back, but that's fine. And so, but this guy was on, uh, this guy, Bill Maher, you know, that unchristian person? Very un- very anti-Christian, to be honest. He's Jewish, but he's an atheist. His mother is either a Christian or a Jewish lady. 
old lady. I don't know if she's still alive, but I saw this thing, this movie called Religulous or Religulous or whatever. Uh, and this guy was talking a bunch of mess, and he was talking about, oh, I want always, I always want to be a boy like a boy, because Mike Tyson, you know the the boxer, funny guy, nice guy, I guess, except when he bites your ear. He didn't bite yours, but he bought, he bit Holyfield's, the Christian boxer. <laughs> And, uh, this guy's like, I want to be boyish too, but not the toxic kind. Toxic? You talk like a woman, Bill Maher. Anyway, that's my thing. You fear being labeled as selfish, toxic, or not empathetic for having reactions that are not nice. Well, you guys, you ladies, at, on Pocket and on Stylist, you need to be more like Trump. He likes to be liked, but he doesn't mind being disliked for telling the truth. And he told the truth, and he dealt with the dislike. Bill Maher uh, has interviewed Jesse Lee Peterson before on uh, Politically Incorrect decades back. And uh, it was, yeah, he's, every now and then he says something legitimate, but yeah, he's not married. Very unchristian, very anti-Christian. But anyway, don't don't let the fear of being considered a bad friend. Every, the, like half the country is so brainwashed they hate Trump, or maybe it's a third. To be honest, a third of the country are suckers. A third of the country are the remnant, maybe, or maybe a third of the Christians, or maybe it's not even a third. <laughs> You should be able to discuss your feelings, good or bad, in a calm and reasoned way with everyone in your life without fearing the reaction. So says this thing from this, uh, this article from Pocket and Stylist. If you or someone you know is struggling with their mental health or emotional well-being, you can find support and resources on the mental health charity Minds website. NHS Every Mind Matters. NHS is a UK. Oh, Stylist is a UK thing? It's a UK, UK, bunch of, somebody said the word earlier this week, and I heard it on Nick's stream, and I've said it before, starts with a C, and, and uh, I hesitate to say it, because I wouldn't want the kids to repeat it, because there are contexts in which it's considered, like, bad and dirty. I don't mean it that way, although it is dirty and it is perverted to be that way. <sighs> But no, uh, Bond. Rebuildingtheman.com slash counseling. Or call Bond, 800-411-BOND, 1-800-411-2663 to to get private counseling. Or call Jesse Lee Peterson's show. I'm on his network um, if you want advice and if it's not too private. (laughs) And you can get uh, some good advice if you need it. But pray... You don't want to be reliant on other people. There's people who are like, Oh, I'm a, I'm a crazy, and I need help. Oh, I have some super chats to read, guys. Shout out to the Odyssey crew. I'm crazy, I'm a crazy, I need help. And then the, these same people end up just turning on the people who help them. Psycho. Psycho. Um, Taking care of businesses, people pleasing is just a hodgepodge way of saying manipulation. Yeah, very manipulative, these females, huh? People pleasing, says Gerana Mo, is the better sounding phrase, better in quotes, for the ego getting off on virtue signaling. Yes, Goyam Defender, or Goy One M Defender. <laughs> yes, that's the word, the C word. Not the bad C word, but the C word that's PG or PG 13. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> the only reason one people pleases is to gain something out of it for themselves. It's not a good thing. It's selfish. Yes. Yes. Okay, I will read your super chats, guys. In fact, let me read them now. Um, thank you to the Streamlab supporters. Let me read this from Brandon M. McCain's tumor. <laughs> 
Uh, I disavow, children. I disavow. But it's funny. Brandon M., one of our resident historians, says McC- John McCain's tumor should have gotten the medal. The actual clump of cells was way more American than McCain. <laughs> that sounds so malicious. But thank you, Brandon M. Appreciate the support. Asmador, our, re- our other resident historian, says, Ev- even though I am a middle-aged man, I'm willing to have an Olympic MMA cage match with Rapinoe to prove a point. Megan Rapinoe. Yeah, to prove a point. Meaning, like, no matter how, how old or skinny looking a man is, if he's still somewhat an able-bodied man, by and large, he's going to be, be able to dominate even an athletic woman, by and large. It's just a fact. Unless she gets, like, a lucky hit on you or whatever. But women frequently will just get shocked at how strong even, like, a weak-looking guy is compared to her. Like, she'll think, oh, I could take this guy down. She'll watch these movies with these skinny girls, skinny pretty girls, acting like they can take down guys who are, like, 200, 300 pounds. Or even 150 pounds, guys, sometimes these 150 pound guys can still take down a woman who's even 150 pounds. Or even heavier. He's still stronger. Men are just naturally just so strong and dominating to a woman. (laughs) It's a fact. Chris Brown versus Rihanna. Yeah, they fought and he won. Right? I think that's the case. So, uh... Don't be playing these mind games, you evil women. Anyway. Goy1M Defender says, As is an able-bodied Sasquatch. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, it's silly. That's Megan Rapinoe, who wants equal pay, and she wants other stuff equal. No such thing. That's what Satan wanted. Satan, the serpent... Or at least, is Satan the serpent from the Garden of Eden? He told this lady, and I use the term lady loosely maybe, Eve? Oh, God doesn't want you to have knowledge like him. Knowledge of good and evil like him. Because if you have knowledge of good and evil like him, you will be equal with God. She wanted to be equal with God. To this day. I decide who lives or dies. To this day! Nice. Well, anyway, let me get to, uh, thank you, Super Chatters, let me get to, briefly, Rick in Hampton, Virginia, I do believe, is on the line. Wow, we've bled through the show. Rick, how are you doing? Brother James, good, mo- good afternoon, good afternoon, my brother. Good uh, morning here, good afternoon to you. Oh, yeah, I forgot y'all on the West Coast. Oh, oh yeah. West Coast. West Coast <laughs> is the best coast. Best <laughs> until we, unless, we, unless and until we move to Florida. Then Florida is the best. Are y'all, are, y'all, are y'all going to move for sure? Or y'all Nothing's for sure until it happens. But yeah. yeah that's the, that's the idea. Yeah, because moving is a lot of work, man. So it's, I know. I, mean, I don't look forward to it, but man. I just don't think about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. Uh, so Stay close to your phone, now. Rick. What, what did you want to okay. talk about? Can you, I want to talk about, you know, um, Brittany Griner, Griner and... Um, the Russian prisoner. Yeah, I you heard know, that she pleaded guilty. Yeah, they said, I think she's guilty. Good for her, I say. I think. I don't know. Maybe that was no, an advi- they, on they, advice they from her, her lawyer. Found, I think they found her guilty in the court system. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. But she pleaded guilty, which was probably advisable. Just be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Lay prostrate and, and pledge, pledge allegiance to Mother Russia. Or is it Father Russia? What's the fatherland? Is that Germany? <laughs> and, and you know what, too? The thing, what I was um, talking about, too, um, the thing I was um, talking about. Yeah. She never once apologized to Russia for breaking the law. Oh. Not at all. She, you, know, you ever notice that? She always kept saying, I want to get out. Get me out. Get me out. Right. Never, I have seen her apologize, say, Mr. President, um, Russia, I am Sorry for breaking your law and bust out my intentions is to try to smuggle drugs into the country. No apology whatsoever. 
Well, it's hard for women to admit they're wrong sometimes, or most of the time. Very hard, I hear. I'm, That's what I hear. And I, in my experience, it tends to be, uh, tends to be true. It's a little rough on them. Man. But, uh, I wish her well. I don't have any ill will towards her, except, except when I, uh, express hatred towards her. That's when I have ill will. <laughs> you know what? I don't need either the wise. Yeah. But also, I'm saying the best thing she can do is just take responsibility for action. Yeah. On, Very true. On a, make it a, make it a, a race issue. Yeah, you know, when you're, when you're in, inter, when you're international or when you're, even if it, you think it's a silly law. Mm-hmm. Just uh, try to follow the try to follow the silly law. It's not like it's Absolutely. that hard. Hopefully, I mean, I get that you're hooked on the pot, or you're hooked on the vape, and you're selfish, mm-hmm. and you can't stop being selfish. But uh, yes, do take responsibility. I appreciate it, Rick. It's good to hear from you, man. I'm I'm sorry to cut you off. Well, I'm, oh, no. I got it. I got to end though. Can I see it real quick? Or can I see it real quick? Real fast. Um. Uh, oh yeah. Yes. Um. You know, in the military, I was in the Navy. And when we went to foreign ports, they would brief us on their alarms. And oh, they would yeah. also tell us, if y'all get thrown in jail over here, it's going to be a while before we get you out, or even if we get you out. Right. We wouldn't know it. And um, Fair that's warning. all I'm saying. There you go. So, love you, James, man. Keep up the good work, my brother. i talk to you tomorrow. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Take care. Well, guys, this has been the Hake Report. It is Thursday. It's time to end the show. And tomorrow is Friday. Should be back. And I should update the hakereport.com slash appearances so that you can find my uh, upcoming appearance tomorrow evening, 5 p.m. Pacific. But don't miss Nick Stream, guys. Nick Stream, always excellent. You can always catch Hake later if you can't catch catch Hake live on his other appearances. Thanks, guys. Take care.